I'm going to talk about the FCI and the Debian Continuous Integration Project. Uh, in the beginning, it was auto package test. So Ian Jackson created that in 2006, so it's quite a while ago, and it's currently maintained by Martin Pitt uh, as part of his job at Canonical. And then, uh, for a very long time, we expected that somehow, somewhere, someone would be running, running auto package tests for every package all the time. And then it took a while to happen, and then I decided to bite the bullet and try it. So during the Christmas breaks last year, I started to hack together a solution. It was very crude at the beginning, very using the naive, more naive solution for everything, just to make sure that I could get something that worked. And then I decided to make that public in January in the Minidev conference. Uh, the UI was a mess and everything was uh, very suboptimal, but then it was fine. People uh, got interested and uh, I got excited about the project. And then we got to the point that uh, on April to have two GSOC students working on the FCI, uh, which was very cool. Uh, I will show some of the results here. It was very nice to have them and they finished the work on August, but I think both are very excited and are probably going to stick with Debian, work on DevCI and all the stuff. So that's very nice. And then this is the uh, one of the first results of the, one of the students is Brandon Fairchild. He worked on the uh, web interface. So the people who uh, knew the, the earliest versions uh, saw that you depended on JavaScript for everything. The UI wouldn't work at all without JavaScript, and also. There were several limitations, like hard coding, unstable slash AMD64 as like the only known uh, suite architecture set. And then Brandon worked on this to make sure the UI is scalable for multiple architectures and multiple suites, and that it can also be used without JavaScript. So there you have the initial page where you can browse the package by name. You can use the search in the right. And th there's also a news section on the left. So Everything that breaks and everything that unbreaks is presented right there, the home page. So you can use the search box on the right. And then you can also look at the, the history of a package on a given architecture. So you said there is a lot of data and everything the maintainer no, uh, needs to, or at least most of the things the maintainer needs to know what happened with the test. And then you have uh, status page with like a uh, graph showing the evolution of the system. So when DevCI started to run, we had, we had less than 200 packages with uh, test suites as far as auto package tests understand. So obviously mo more packages than that have test suites, but they were not integrated into the system. And then now like uh, eight months later, we have close to 600 packages. So like 400 packages in a little more than six months is very nice, and I hope we can go close to the 20,000 source packages. So this is source packages, so the auto package that is by source package. And then here's the other uh, GSOC project by Lucas, which is there in the back, which is uh, finding the packages that uh, have broken test suites and fixing them. So he reported until last night, more than 20 bugs. 12 of those were already closed, and another one is pending. So uh, it, it was a, a very interesting work where we could understand what types of things were broken in test suites and be able to fix them. So that they will keep working and only break when the actual, uh, the actual functionality breaks and not because the test doesn't match what the system expects. And then uh, it's important to have in mind the distinction between Debian CI and Debian CI. So Debian CI is, a, is packaged in Debian is a solution to uh, have a continuous integration solution integrated with a Debian archive. It will process dependencies and know when to run tests based on when which package got uploaded since the last time it checked. And so if your package uh, has dependencies that got uploaded, then your package will be retested again. 
to make sure everything still works. And then Debian CI is the Debian instance of DevCI running on ci.debian.net. Uh, so to be honest, DevCI still has some things that are hard-coded for ci.devin.net, but uh, the idea is to remove those hard-coded bits and be able to uh, make that general. So the, the team until uh, now is myself, Martin Pitch. He's a Debian and Ubuntu developer working for Canonical. And then the two GSOC students, Brandon and Lucas, which will hopefully stick with us for the future. So th there are uh, several ways to help. So you can, there's the obvious ways, like sending bug reports and sending patches. You can also fix broken test suites and make sure the test suite is okay and it's only going to, going to fail if there is an actual problem with the package. You can add test suites to your package to, so that we will know if the package breaks in the future. And also if you have hardware to spare, especially non-X86 hardware, is probably going to be very useful, and then we, you can talk to me, and we can coordinate with DSA to get the, the hardware in Debian, maintained by Debian sysadmin team, and then we we can have different architectures than AMD 64, which is uh, everyone has all the time. So speaking a little about the DevCI architecture, so uh, technology we use is auto package sets plus its backend, so. DevCI doesn't uh, deal with the helm of auto package tests. So everything, the tests run and everything is done by auto package tests and DevCI just coordinates reading from the archive and knowing, and knowing when to run tests and then collecting the results and presenting with, in the web UI. So it's written in Ruby and Shell. So we, I started with Shell, but then things got complicated and then you not, you're not able to keep uh, programming stuff in Shell at some point. It has a test suite. It, itself, so dog fooding for the wing, so we know if DevCI itself breaks. And then how it works now, so everything was done like in the very simplest way to make sure, just to make it work, so it all happens in a single node, so you have DevCI batch, which is the process that runs, uh, it runs every six hours to match the uh, the, the the install runs, so it runs like three hours after the install, and then it will check which packages need to be run, put that into list, and then call DevCI test for each package. DevCI test will run the packages, the test with auto package tests, and then uh, store the results in that store. So the the interesting thing is that we have since the beginning we changed the the store should be append only, so you can always just append new tests. And then DevCI generate index will take those results and generate what you see in the web UI. So that's the HTML content, the JSON data files you can use for any type of automation and all kinds of stuff. But then that, this architecture uh, obviously doesn't scale because it's all in a single node and we need something better. So for the future we have a very nice uh, Opportunities first incoming.debian.org is now public, so you can have the package that just built. On, it was just built on the build this installed. So I will include uh, reading package from incoming. So we don't need to wait for the install. We can run like every 10 minutes and know when packages uh, got uploaded. We need uh, distributed worker nodes to be able to scale out. Uh, with more CPU power, and then we all, I also have started a conversation with DSA to move this into Debian infrastructure, to not depend on my to not depend on myself forever. So the future looks good. So uh, my idea is to move to something like this. So the gray boxes are nodes. So the idea is to have a controller node that will run DevCI batch, uh, still reading from the archive, but this time all the time because we are running using incoming.debian.org packages. So we don't have to wait for the install. And then every package that needs to be run will be put in the queue. And then we have several worker nodes reading from that queue and running the test and sending the results to the append only storage, which will be synced to the controller node back. And then the controller can just keep in a loop updating the data. So it, it, uh, ideally we'll be able to have test results very shortly after the package was uploaded. 
instead of waiting a couple of days that is at its now. And then uh, I also plan to do more stuff like adding more suites, so running tests on experimental tests in stable, stable plus backports and node stable plus LTS. And also there's work on uh, running functional upgrade tests, so like PewParts already handles upgrade tests, but then it just tests that the upgrade itself worked, but you have no way of knowing that the application is actually going to work after the upgrade. So there's a patch I, I, work, I wrote for auto package tests supporting this, so it will install whatever package you want, you say, on, uh, like on, for instance, Wheezy, then upgrade to Jesse, and then run a test suite script. Then you, you can test uh, if your upgrade actually works and leaves the this, this system in the desired state. Then there's all types of wish lists, email notifications, uh, people want it, people don't want it, so we have to find a solution that works for everyone. Uh, another interesting idea is a uh, news feed per maintainer, so I didn't comment on that, but each package has a RSS feed of state changes, so if your package was passing and then it failed, you get a new RSS item and the other way around. So if your package always fails, you, you don't be spammed with fail, fail, fail all the time. And if it always passes, also you won't be notified. And then uh, it, that's now for either all packages or for each package. And the idea is to have a pair maintain and your feed is more useful so you can just subscribe to a single feed and receive everything that should be of your interest. And then uh, all types of requests. If you are using ci.dev.net on a daily basis, you can talk to me and we can uh, put stuff in the to-do list. So uh, now, uh, now I, that I talked about uh, CI itself, so I decided to put together a mini tutorial on writing tests for your package. And I hope it's going to be useful. We, we can also schedule a, an ad hoc session in the following days if you guys want to follow up with that and look into actual packages. So there's uh, a couple of things you, you can read. So auto package test has a lot of readme files with documentation on how to specify tests, the actual specification of the test control file format, and all kinds of uh, how, to, how to run tests against different types of test beds. Uh, you have uh, CH roots, you have KVM, you have uh, containers, you have uh, running tests against a system that you use SSH to connect. So there's lots of stuff there. And then there's also the ci.tabin.net documentation, which will uh, tell you uh, a small fact in the beginning, then how to reproduce the tests as they run on the BCI. So that's useful. And then uh, two important points to keep in mind. The, the goal of, of auto package tests is to test the package as they are installed. So you should not use code from the source tree, uh, except the test suite itself. So if AppString has a test suite, you can run that, but you have to make sure it's not going to use this local copy of the files in the, in the source directory. But inside it, we will use the installed files. Also, please avoid full build if possible, because if it is possible to specify that your test suite requires a full build of the package, but then if you do that, you will DOS the infrastructure. So let's leave the builds with the build this and the test with the test infrastructure. So the basic structure is to have a Debian test directory with a control file, which is very uh, similar to the Debian control file. So you have one paragraph for each uh, set of tests you want. So the simplest form is just to uh, list the name of the tests, and then you have uh, binaries or scripts or everything that's executable inside Debian test with that name, so, and it will be executed. So this one will pass, this one will fail, so the, uh, the entire test run in this case will fail because this script here will fail in the bottom. So, and then, you see, uh, the test suite can be anything. It's just a program. It, it can be a shell script, it can be a Ruby script, Perl, Python. It can be something that you build during the build of the package. So you, you can specify 
it, it can be a, a static uh, C binary there also. So there are a couple of ways of ways of running tests. The simplest one is to use SAGT from dev scripts. So you have to run that from your source directory. It will run the tests. Uh, but SAG is not up to date right now with the new features of auto package test and the DEPH specification. So the next uh, thing you want probably to do is to use the actual ADG run uh, runner, which is provided by auto package test. So you pass the current directory, and then three, that's three dashes, yes. And then new means don't use any virtualization, so that will run the tests on your local system. So that assumes that lo the package you just built is installed on your system, and then it will just run the tests. I if you don't have the package installed, it will fail because you don't, it, the test dependencies don't don't, uh, are not satisfied. So you, you can also, and you probably want to run the test against a clean system, so you can run, run use the SH, SCH root virtualization platform also, and then just pretty much the same thing. So, uh, important to note, you want an apt proxy, otherwise you will be downloading stuff from the net every time. And uh, ways to test a test bed, that's not the, the, your local system. So the easiest way is to just install DevCI and run DevCI setup as root. It will create the, the CH root exactly the same way it's, run, it's uh, created on the server. So you have the exact same CH root that runs on the server. And thus you just add yourself to the DevCI group to, to have permissions to run that. And then you just uh, run ADT run dash dash user DevCI. Here is the simplest form, passing the local directory, but if you look at the auto package test documentation, there are several other ways you can pass binary packages, you can pass source packages, you can pass change files, and then it will do the right thing with each one. And then you have a, the devci setup commands creates a ch root called devci dash unstable dash uh, your architecture. You can also run tests without those uh, trivial wrapper scripts. So instead of specifying a list of uh, test scripts, you can just use test command and then call whatever you want. If that uh, returns zero, your test passes. If that returns non-zero, your test fails. Uh, you can specify dependencies for your tests. So if you don't say anything, it will um, default to the add symbol, which means all the binary packages built by this source package. So if you don't say anything, the test bed will get all, all binary packages installed, and then the test will run. Otherwise, you can specify explicit list of dependencies. So for instance, if you have, uh, you, you are using an external test runner, you can add it, that to your dependency list. Uh, you can also specify restrictions on the environment the test expects. So you can say that the test needs to be run as root, and then each test bed will support that or not, but most of them do. You can specify that the test also needs the recommends, so uh, the recommended package will be installed together with the, with the binaries uh, built from that source package. And you can also say that uh, you allow output on standard error. So by default, if there's anything on standard error, the test is uh, assumed to be failed, which doesn't make sense most of the time, so because uh, usually standard error is very abused by all types of uh, programs, so usually you want either specifying a low standard error or redirecting standard error to standard output. And then uh, in the GSOC problem, program in project, we found some common problems that you might want to avoid. First one is missing dependencies, so that's why you want to always run your test on a clean environment, using a CH root at least. Uh, also missing restrictions, so sometimes, uh, I guess people still build packages as root, and then when they run the test, they don't they just assume it's, uh, the test is running as root, and that's not the case. 
uh, on most situations, especially in automation scenarios. So then assuming roots is, is a common mistake. And then sometimes it's uh, assuming root just is just a matter of assuming the right path environment variable. So call, calling stuff in user as being without a full path with a regular user will probably fail. But then also sometimes there's stuff like permissions. Or you, if you need to like change uh, system configuration files, then you need root. You don't have to. Ex you don't have an escape for that. Also, there's a, a couple of simple programming errors, like capitalization issues and all kinds of silly stuff. Also, some locale assumptions. So the clean system is usually using the C locale and some tests depend on UTF-8 or something. So if you need UTF-8, make sure you export that into an environment, in the test environment. So looking at a real example, uh, the Ruby FFI package, <laughs> So right now it has it has two tests, which is a simple smoke test, which is a script in Debian test, and then uh, we just released a new version of the gen 2 deb packaging helper for Ruby, which adds the option of auto package test. So it will run the test for that package without any of the local code. So it will move away the local Ruby code and make sure the test run against the installed version of the package. And then we'll be able to enable test suites for all 500 Ruby packages just with a new source approach. And then you, you, you see there the dependencies, so uh, the test depends on all the binary packages plus the stuff I need to run the tests. And then the, the smoke test is a, is a very simple test that just tests the most basic functionality of the, of the package, which is useful because uh, Ruby FFI is a very complicated uh, library, so if people who deal with bootstrapping know that Ruby and FFI uh, separated are usually a problem, but then Ruby and FFI together is even more so. So this is uh, just binding uh, a function from the libc and calling that from Ruby and make sure that if that works, then you are pretty sure that your system is not completely broken. And then I have, uh, and that's all I had. Maybe I went too fast. 25 minutes, so we have uh, we have some some uh, time to discuss and to people for people to make uh, questions. Uh, and if if there is interest, we can schedule a a doc session to look at actual packages and 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 do whatever it's needed. So I have two questions. First of all, thanks for your talk. Um, so as a package maintainer of a library that does network communication, uh, I have two things that I need from a continuous integration environment. I need to be able to bind ports mm -hmm. so that I can test that my network communications are working. And as it's a library, I also need to be notified if a change in my library breaks tests for other packages. So are both of those things possible? Mm -hmm. uh, so binding ports should usually just work. So if, uh, for instance, if you depend on Apache, Apache will install and bind to port 80. As long as the test system doesn't have anything else on port 80, it should be fine. Or if it's a... Uh, uh, high port, you can just bind it yourself from the test script. That's just fine. Uh, about notification, if the reverse dependencies fail, that's that's a good uh, suggestion. We, we, I think it's probably possible we can just, it just needs the code to do that. <laughs> um. Can you explain a bit about how your uh, Ruby helper script moves the upstream source out of the way within the rules of, I, I think I don't quite understand the rules of auto package test, what you're allowed to modify in the tree and so on. Mm. Okay, so usually um, there is a restriction 
that you can specify that your test needs a, a writable source tree. So, and depending on your test bed, you need that. But most of the time, you don't need that. You can just move stuff away from the source directly because uh, the source package is copied into the test bed. So most of the time, you are not modifying your local. So if you are building on your laptop and you run on CH root, it will copy the source package into the CH root and run stuff there, so it's not going to break your local copy. So uh, what the, the Gentle Dev helper does is just moving the files away. It moves the files away, you run the commands it needs to run, and then moves them back. Because, uh, okay, so the structure of Ruby packages is so that uh, source files are in specifically named directories, so you know you have the lib directory, which where you have pure Ruby code, and you have the X directory where you have like C extension. So you know what you need to move away and put it back after the test. Ah, okay, yeah, it's the put it back after the test was the key point. Yeah, I, thank I, you. I, okay. <laughs> um, one one of the question you asked was how to do email notifications and. I think you just you just need to be hooked up in the PTS because that's where you can optionally subscribe to yeah. something. I'm not sure who is maintaining that piece of code now, though. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think if we do email, it has to go to the PTS. We'll, we'll, we'll reach the right people, I think. But, but please do it. I want email notifications. <laughs> Um, just a small wish list uh, bug report, I guess. Um, it seems that ADT is putting these comments into the log, like lots of at marks, and, and it, I guess it makes the machine possible, but you don't do it yet. Would be nice to get a fancy, easily navigatable view of logs on mm -hmm. Deb CI because it, it's not easily possible to, to see exactly where it breaks among all the other output there. Okay, yeah. um, and I, I think it's already there by having these markers of various steps. Mm -hmm. just to yeah, yeah that's, that's a good idea, actually. Okay. To, like, to hide all the setups parts and just show, by default, just show the output of your tests. It's, it's a good idea, yes. As far as I understand, uh, DevCI is, uh, at the same time, a uh, test runner and uh, test orchestrator. Does it make sense to outsource uh, the parts that functionally overlap with things like Jenkins to external tools? Uh, so, the actual test running is done by auto package test, so that's not DevCI at all. I okay, mean, in you, that case, how is it different from Jenkins? Uh, well, uh, to do this, I, I had to. Yeah, that's a good question. So, I had to work out the Debian archive to figure out when to trigger tests anyway. So, I figured I'd just run the test myself instead of throwing them somewhere else. So and the primary difference is, is uh, mess, that I mean, it's able to track changes in Debian archive. Sorry? The primary difference is being able to track and yes. trigger off events happening in Debian archive. Yes. And be able to create your own uh, user interface that does exactly what you need and nothing else. I mean, uh, to me, the Jenkins interface, it, it might work for people, but uh, it's completely confusing for me. It's only completely confusing to people who've never seen it before and haven't spent a year or three figuring it out. Yeah. I don't think we can spare one year of three or of every maintainer in Debian to be able to use the results in a useful way. I also guess another benefit of the current approach is that we can tailor it very much to the kind of metadata relation chain thingies that we have. So we, we don't have build IDs, but rather we have packages and version numbers and we, we can navigate that easily. So yeah. I guess we gain something from not using an off-the-shelf off product for this. So I, I think it's reasonable to do our own thing here. Uh, I like it. Uh, 
Um, so at one point you, you said you were going to support maybe multiple architectures. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm, I'm, so that's the idea I had uh, during the previous session, but I'm going to ask you again. Uh, how much would it be possible to have a web interface where I can upload a, a, a build, like a .changes file in the, in the mm -hmm. build deb, uh, or maybe the source, and get uh, the auto package test run on Nipsel, which I don't have an easy access to, for example. Yeah, so for running on different architectures, you need hardware, first and foremost. I mean, in my uh, conversation with DSA, they mentioned the possibility of using spare build these cycles, but I'm not sure that's going to work. Uh, but uh, as long as we have the hardware, it's fine. I mean, the, the only problem is having the hardware. About, uh, about so uh, in the previous session, I, I was thinking about solution for uh, running tests on arbitrary packages. Uh, I'm not sure I want to, uh, to have a web interface for that, but maybe a special upload queue should work just fine and fits with most of our workflow. Just upload to, I need to test this, and then you have your test run. I mean, I, because uh, the, the, the web UI is currently just static at the HTML, and I'm not sure I want to change that, uh, because it makes every, uh, several things just more, a lot more easier. But uh, a special upload queue would, would be doable, for sure. Yeah, that, that would be great. Well, if nobody else has anything, so if you guys want to get in touch, so, oh, there. I guess maybe a last thing. Um, I think this is a perfect thing for Debian and we, need have, we, we can really make use of it. And I think this will be a very big change for Debian once people use it more to have the ability to have this kind of automated testing. And I want to thank you a lot for doing this. It's well, thank great. You. Very appreciated. <laughs>